Hello Internet World, thank you for joining me today right here in our YouTube studio and we're going to talk about the Cadillac X-T4. So I want to give a big shout out to GM Canada for trusting me with this Cadillac X-T4 because they are the first manufacturer that have actually put faith in me by giving me one to drive for a week. So thank you. So what is the X-T4 and why is it important? Well it's a big stepping stone for Cadillac in my opinion only because Cadillac has really been forgotten. When they produced the Cadillac Escalade, that really shot them to the top of the pyramid. But in the last 10 years, they've slowly phased away and really nobody talks about Cadillac that much. Yeah, there's a CTS-V, but that's only for a small select drivers. But now, with this growing huge segment of this SUV where everybody's driving SUVs, Cadillac has brought you this. Usually when I have these cars, I only have them for a few hours. However, when I had this car, I've had it for a week, so I've really dug into exactly what this car brings to me. And one of the things I really like is this front end. I mean, this front end is spectacular. So I did a whole bunch of videos to actually find out, does it actually look as good as it does? So I paired it side by side to an X3 as well as a Q3 to see how this front end looks. And I took a vote of about 150 people and 63% of people voted this front end. So that must tell you something, that this front end has merit. So this is the most equipped X-T4 you can get in Canada. This thing's got everything. It's loaded from top to bottom with equipment, including all the blackout package. It's got stop and go, lane keep, blind spot indicator, rear cross drop. It's got everything that you can name off. But why this cheapy plastic? I get it, I get it. You know, you might live in a city that gets scratched up and stuff like that, but this is such a nice car. Please stop using this stuff. It's just crappy, but you kind of made yourself a little bit better when you put some piano black finish down here. So piano black, nice black all the way through. I love the way this accent sort of ties in here. That's piano black. And the fact these headlights say Cadillac right on them is awesome. So everything's getting rounded, but Cadillac decided to keep it as flat and square as possible, which I love. And the fact is this, this front end, this front upper hood here is basically almost like a vet in some respects. And it kind of matches the key. So hold on, let me get the key and show you guys. So they even made the key match the center of the hood here that separates on both sides and this cowl-like hood. A lot of guys are calling it cowl-like hood, but I get it, sort of raised, and it makes it more stealthy and aggressive. But the cool part about this is the fact the front end is angled, but it's flat. And everything is rounded nowadays, so it's kind of nice to really see a front end that's kind of bold, and I wouldn't say masculine, but it just looks sharp. Before we get to the side of the car, I want to talk about one final thing, and that is the badge. I like the badge has some color in it because this car is all black on the front, so that badge makes a pop. So on the side of the car, the only thing I really don't like is I don't like the fact they continued some of this unfinished plastic that they ran all the way around. Yeah, it's kind of a plasticky rubber feeling. I don't really like that, but I understand why they did it in the sense that generally most cities do beat up cars. Now, if you want to make it a volume product, you have to get something where you're not going to the body shop to get it refinished. So they probably put this on the side. So if it does get a bit of a scrape, it's not really that big of a deal as opposed to if it gets, if it's got something that's painted, then you got to take it to the body shop and fill it and clean it up. So I guess it kind of does work. I've seen some other GM product and generally the wheel wells are actually full of plastic, but in this specific case, they actually did follow some of the German counterparts and they have put a carpeted like material on the inside to make it less noisy and more insulated when you go over rocks and gravel, that kind of thing. An annoyance I found in this car is the way the keys work. Now, I like the way the key looks. I like the fact it's got remote starter, but one thing I do not like about it is the fact this thing auto locks like crazy. It's constantly locking. And I gotta push the button for me to open and close. I like in the German counterparts, you can just pull the handle, it automatically unlocks. But in the Q3, it doesn't do in the back doors, it just does in the front doors. So in this specific one, you've got a button on all doors you can lock and unlock but I don't like the fact this thing constantly auto locks. There's probably a way in there for me to stop doing that, but I've been around this car now for about 45 minutes and it's auto locked about seven times so far. There it goes again, it's auto locked. All right, so come on in. Okay. Something odd and probably something that nobody ever picks up, wiper blades. These are conventional wiper blades 
but some of the German counterparts use those sort of gravity type wiper blades that look like a squeegee of sorts. Um, but I actually prefer this, and a lot of people have switched to that only because it's more luxury. But I like the fact Cadillac stuck with the original because this works. The other one always leaves streaks in your windows. So I don't know if you've ever driven, driven a German car and you, and you run the wiper blades, you'll always have this random streak that you could just never fix. And you can take it back to the dealer 30 times, but it's not going to change the fact. You actually have to go back to the old school wiper blades to make that work. So on the side of this car, with the X-T4, I like the way Cadillac's made everything black. Now other manufacturers actually do have also blackout packages, but in their specific version, the other manufacturers actually put a slightly off black. So they might have all black here, black trim, but they're missing sort of the sill here, or they're missing something, or the top here is not finished the way this is done. This is all done in a high gloss black. So everything's high gloss black. Sort of your lower sill's high gloss black, your roof rail's high gloss black, and every other piece here is high gloss black, whereas other manufacturers, they'll put high gloss black in a few places and then just put gloss black in other places, or some places have matte black, like the Audi Q3. The side here says premium fuel recommended, which doesn't really mean that you need to put it, they're just recommending it. So that's interesting as well. So you buy a premium car, if you look at some of the other manufacturers, like Lexus as an example, they'll have the RX350 that requires premium fuel, but that exact same engine in a Camry requires regular fuel. So it's kind of cool that they can say premium fuel recommended, but you don't really have to use it. All right, so the back of this car is pretty much almost exactly the same as the front in terms of how much I like it. The back and the front of this car separately are awesome. The middle, hmm, not so much. It looks like the front's awesome, the back's awesome, the middle, they kind of stretch it together. So it's like, I like it when I look at it from the back, I like it when I look at it from the front, but the side, not so much. So let's talk about why I like the back. First things first, I really like the fact that from a marketing perspective, Cadillac decided to not use 2.0, but use 350T. Now 350 would make me think there's a V6 in here, so as a guy driving behind, know nothing about the car, I think, man, there's a V6 in that car? That thing must fly. I like how in the back, they've also used the same sort of design cues that they've pivoted right to the center on an angle, just like the key did, right in the back here. So I like the way this back really looks. And again, I know that they use this plastic piece, um, but I do like this badging. I like the fact that this badge really highlights it. And I do like the fact that they actually put a button in the back to pop the trunk, which works when the car's locked. Look at that. Cool things I do like. I like the fact they've got real exhaust tips. They're real and they work. And how they hide the rear wiper in here. And they also have a rear camera cleaner. This little piece here shoots out washer fluid to clean the camera. Genius. But I really do like the fact that it says 350T. I know a lot of guys don't like that fact, but I actually do love it because it makes me feel like I'm spending my money on something that is not a four cylinder, even though it's a four cylinder. All right, hold up. So you guys think I'm done here with the cameras. I'm not. There's actually two cameras in the back of this truck. There is a camera up here that I talked about in terms of getting clean, and there's a second camera under here. Come on. Right there. Two cameras. In terms of rear tunnel cover, this thing's pretty light and flimsy. In one hand, it's pretty easy to pull out versus some of the other competitors. But in the other hand, it doesn't really have any structural support, so it could break. So you couldn't really put anything heavy on here because it'll bend and break, or it can't really get that much water either. However, it is very light and easy to pull. I do like the fact this does have a hanger, and I do like what they're thinking. But let me show you this here for a second. This back panel is sturdy. It does have this little sort of hanger here, which a few of the German products do have. Um, but they have this Velcro piece that they expect you to put back together once you're done. So I would probably just skip that and leave this piece inside. Kind of flimsy, kind of an afterthought, but I like the idea. They probably thought about it after the fact, but I do like the idea. It does not come with a spare tire. And I would have thought that they would the, put the subwoofer in here because if you listen to the sound system in this car, it's phenomenal. The sound system on this car, I have to repeat, is the best sound system I've ever heard in an SUV by far. It's phenomenal. So where is the sub is the million dollar question. All right, so I'm on the inside of the X-T4 now, and they say Audi has the best interiors in the market, and that might be true, but Cadillac's done a really good job here. I like the way they've mixed the materials in here. This Sedona Brown is tastefully beautiful. They do have some wood grain here that is just minimal. It's not a lot of wood grain. Some of these cars just put too much wood grain and it doesn't look as good, but the mix of materials is good. They've got perforations of steering wheel. They've got stitching on the dash. They've got a rubberized material that doesn't feel rubberized. There's not really a lot of plastic here to complain about. Like, as I said, this, this is actually nice soft leather. Now, I can be picky, and I can touch the headliner, which I usually do, and test the headliner. There, I think the Germans got them, 
But really, who touches that? It's guys like me that are really picky that might touch that, but everybody else is gonna feel this and they say, wow, this is really good leather. This has a lot of good pieces in it. So yeah, I'm, I think in terms of look, fit, and finish, I'm pretty happy with what I see. I really do like this mirror. This mirror is super cool. The fact that you can zoom in, zoom out. It's got two mirrors, it's got a mirror, I mean, it's got two cameras, sorry. It's got a, a camera mirror and it's got a mirror on the LCD panel. Now, a lot of complaints are about this LCD panel and how it's actually facing upward. Now, if I showed it to you, it actually doesn't face the driver. It actually faces the sunroof. And when it comes to buttons, there's tons of buttons. So you can use buttons if you'd like, or you can use the touch panel if you'd like. So we've actually had both, but buttons everywhere. Cadillac said, you guys want buttons? We're giving you buttons. Another cool part they thought about is cell phones. You can take your phone, position it here, and it'll transfer all your data from your phone right to the car. If you want to charge your phone, you grab the phone and you slide it right here. You actually don't have to open up the armrest. Now it doesn't slide backwards or forward and it doesn't hold up to a certain level, but it does have a place to hide your cell phone without actually opening up the glove box. Now, if I'm being picky, you can adjust how far or how high your cell phone goes based on this little plastic thing. Now this little plastic thing needs to be better. They should really pivot up and down, but you can take this plastic thing and slide it in. And then if, you're if you want your cell phone to stick higher, you can. If you want your cell phone to stick lower, you can. And it gets charged while doing this. All right, car with a lot of buttons. I'm ready to drive you. And uh, something really odd I noticed, I talked about the sound system, how awesome this thing is, so I won't blast in your ear, but I will say that normally in the door panel, when you open up the door panel, it'll say like the brand of uh, whether it be like Bang & Olufsen or Bose or whatever. It'll tell you exactly what kind of sound system there is in this car, but it actually doesn't. It only tells you Bose in the front A pillar. It's just hiding, it's just Bose. But in the door panel, you would think Cadillac likes to, would like to throw Cadillac everywhere. I mean, not the word Cadillac, but the badge Cadillac is pretty much almost everywhere in this car. And there's writing everywhere, like GM plus the writing, like every single window piece or every single window pane in this car has GM all over it. There's GM there, there's GM there, there's GM in the front, there's even GM stickers. So they put their name everywhere. And I know that obviously Bose is not GM, but you would think in the door panel they'd put something. And on the sound system, this sound system is so loud that these doors actually start rattle, not rattling, but the air, there's so much air pressure in it that it actually vibrates, that it's actually pretty cool. And there's no noise from it, which is awesome. So I'm, I mean, yeah, I hear you that, you know, a solid door panel shouldn't vibrate the way that this thing does, but it vibrates like crazy, but there's no noise. So that's pretty cool. In terms of driving it, there is, uh, so it is a four cylinder. It's not a six. And it makes 258 pounds of, pounds of torque. It makes 225 horsepower or so, but the 258 pounds of torque is pretty funny because a lot of car manufacturers have 258 foot pounds of torque. It's got heads up display, it's super clear. It, it shows you the speed you're driving, the speed you can drive. It shows you the lane, the keep your lane. It shows you the stop and go. It shows you all that stuff. In terms of steering, it's got pretty good electric steering. So it's pretty easy. Uh, kind of all, the steering's kind of all the same across the board. It's the BMW, the Audis, and this. The steering is almost the same. This is a little bit lighter, but I always find it really funny with these four cylinders and the way your leg feels or the throttle response. When you touch the throttle response, it doesn't really have anything. It's really light, like it feels like it's not gonna go. In terms of creature comforts in this car, the creature comforts are incredible. They've got massage seats, which are not really massage. They're more like an Audi S5 that rolls over and it's called, like it's a lumbar support that moves up and down and that's exactly what this car has. But they don't lie to you, they don't say massage. They actually just say roll. So it rolls, but it's not a massage. So some other cars say massage when it's not really a massage and this one says roll. So at least they're honest in that space. I'm just feeling the leather on the side of the seat here and the leather's really soft. They do a good job with the leather, except something's really funny is that the inside piece of this leather doesn't really feel like leather. It feels like a tougher leather than the outside pieces and that's probably because they got a lot of experience in their Escalades. Um, I don't know if you guys know, but in the older Escalades, the leather really gets worn out really quick. It's a really soft leather. So after a year, basically the leather looks like it's worn out. So imagine after like five years and after 10 years of the Escalade being around, the leather is really beat up. So the leather is really soft, but on the left side, when I get in and out of the car, that strip of leather is actually tougher than the rest of the other pieces of leather. Really strange piece of information there. So there's four driving modes in the X-T4, four driving modes, X-T4, tour, all-wheel drive, sport, and off-road. 
Now, when I put it in sport, it actually goes from two wheel drive, so from front wheel drive to all wheel drive, and it does have some sort of mechanical rear plate clutch system that engages and disengages for more traction. Now, I just find that when I go from tour into sport, the car sort of takes about a second or so for it to figure out what's going on. And when I put it in sport, the RPMs go up, my all wheel drive button flashes, and all of a sudden I got all wheel drive, and the car sort of just livens up. So it is kind of nice that it has a change here. I don't know why it goes from two-wheel drive to all-wheel drive when you go into sport. That's a bit of that's a bit you know excessive there. I guess you do need four-wheel drive when you're getting sporty, as opposed to some of the other systems from other manufacturers will actually just automatically disengage the two-wheel drive and the four-wheel drive based on the steering. So if you're turning a right or a left, it, it auto automatically engages and disengages. But in this specific car, you actually have to press a mode button for it to do it. So from a driver's perspective, I think this thing is heavy on frills. Um, sound system, as I said, is, is phenomenal. There's not a lot of blind spots in this car. There's a lot of window, a lot of glass. So this is one of those cars that you get in and you kind of want to drive it as a car, but you're really in an SUV. And that, as I said, has been taken on a, a world of its own. There's a lot of buyers out there that still want to feel like they're in a car. So this is sort of a transitional car where it's not really a full SUV, but it's kind of a car sort of SUV, or they've got all kinds of names for it now. CUV, SUV, who knows, V. Oh, this is totally cool. I did not know this, but this rear view camera, when I talked about how this is actually a camera, this camera is actually on when I'm driving. I thought it was actually, this is how crazy domestics are. If you want to sync your phone for Bluetooth, you can't do that until you come to a stop because you can't do it when you're driving. But you can look behind you on what's behind you without actually turning your head because the camera is constantly on no matter what speed you're driving. Like I'm doing 50 right now and I can see right behind me what I just passed and the clarity is great it's not 4k but it's 720 maybe 1080p and we're just gonna do a quick acceleration test foot to the ground all right so that oh god this thing actually fries tires first and second that is hilarious this thing rips tires first and second doesn't have any bunny hops when you do that though it still holds it fries but it holds so this has a nine speed transmission and nine seems a bit excessive, I think, but let's just see it. Oh, second gear fries. Okay, foot to the ground. Now we're gonna try that again in the tour mode, which is a two wheel drive. And it's probably gonna fry tires. There we go, first gear, all spin. Second, the traction control comes on, but it's, it, it does not upshift for you. That's funny, it doesn't upshift. Even a gel, <laughs> Even a Jetta GLI upshifts for you. This thing holds the gear, it will not upshift. It'll just bounce off the rev limiter. But it doesn't really even sound like a rev limiter, it just sounds like it's just revving. And that doesn't go bing, 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 just goes Rrr. That's hilarious. Okay, so let's try that again in all wheel drive. So manual mode. Now obviously this car is not a race car and nobody should really be doing this, but let's just try it out. Here we go, first gear, press the button. All right, so it does something really funny from second to third. It just doesn't shift. It, you press the button, it says third, but it doesn't really go to third. It still looks like it's in second. So eh, we'll just stick to drive and roll around. Roll around. <clears throat> the person buying this car is not using the paddle shifters. There's no way they're using these paddle shifters. They suck. They're not good at all. But it's got a nine speed transmission, which is an awesome marketing factor because the guy selling these things saying it's got a nine speed transmission. Everybody else got a seven and eight, but we have a nine. And the customer's thinking, hmm, there must be a reason they put a nine speed transmission in this car. And Cadillac says is they use the higher gears on the highway to reduce fuel consumption and the shorter gears for acceleration off the line. And I can see that working. But really, nobody's gonna buy this car to drive it aggressively. It's fast enough to go to A to B. It's got enough zip. It doesn't sound too bad under throttle, and it's comfortable. That's the thing, it's a comfortable car. It feels very similar to an Audi Q3, closer to a BMW X3, but it's very similar in the sense that it's not as firm. I find that the Audis are a little bit more firm, and the BMWs are a little bit more couchy, and this is sort of like an X3, but not as stiff as a Q3. It does a great job throwing me back my lane. The technology in this car to hold me in the lane is phenomenal. I can't even get close to the center line. Versus in the other products, as soon as I go close to the line, 
it lets me touch the line and then pushes me over. This one pushes me right back. It doesn't even allow me to screw around here. It keeps me right in my lane. This is fast enough, guys. This is fast enough. You're not buying this to buy something fast. You're buying this because you want something to look good, small, easy to drive, easy to park, nimble handling, great sound system. That's what this car gives you. So if that's what you're after, Cadillac XT4 is for you. All right, guys, I hope you liked this video on this Cadillac XT4. Now, I know this is a very busy space, but I wanted to bring you something a little bit different. And thanks again to the guys at GM for letting me review this car.